Hello and welcome to this film which is all about um, some practicals that you may have done in class called metal displacement reactions um, and basically this is just the film to help you understand what was going on. Now what we're going to hopefully be able to think about whilst we're going through this film is things such as what's been oxidized, what's been reduced and therefore what's the oxidizing agent and what's the reducing agent and can you write an equation for the reaction that's taking place. Okay, well let's start off by having a look at the magnesium nitrate experiments. Now at the bottom of the screen you can see the before photos and at the top you can see the after photos and if we start off by looking at the, uh, the two photos on the left these deal with zinc having been placed in magnesium nitrate solution and you can probably see that there's not a great deal of difference between the zinc before and after and that's because these two substances don't react together. Same thing with this lump of lead that's sitting at the bottom of the tube that doesn't react with magnesium nitrate either and nor does the copper. Okay, So it, we did these experiments but they're not particularly thrilling because there's no reaction in any of them. So let's just see what we can gather from that. Okay, So we're starting in every case we're starting with magnesium ions as part of the magnesium nitrate and we've got atoms of copper lead and zinc. So magnesium 2 plus, right? So that is a charged ion. Okay, well, all ions are charged, but this one's lost two electrons, whereas these are copper, lead, and zinc. Okay, so in other words, atoms that haven't yet lost any electrons. There's no visible reaction, and that means we're ending up with what we started with. Okay, so in other words, when I put copper in magnesium nitrate solution, it's unable to give its electrons to magnesium. Same with uh, lead and same thing with zinc. So in other words, where they can't reduce the magnesium using these metals. Okay, They're not good enough at giving their electrons away. They're not good enough reducing agents. Let's have a look at some other experiments that are perhaps a bit more interesting because there's something actually going on in them. Okay, these were the lead nitrate experiments. So these tubes again, four at the bottom and after at the top. Um, each tube has lead nitrate in it, and we've got the three metals other than lead here. So we've got copper on the left, zinc in the middle, and magnesium on the right. And you can see that copper hasn't changed much. So copper ions weren't able, sorry, copper atoms weren't able to give their electrons to lead ions, but we'll talk about that a bit more in a minute. Zinc certainly has reacted. There seems to be this kind of uh, new metal formed on the surface of the other one and the same thing with magnesium in fact so much the magnesium has reacted in this one that we're kind of just collecting the metal this new metal at the bottom so let's see if we can actually explain what's going on here well zinc remember reacted with lead and this new metal that we formed was the lead okay so the lead ions in the solution gained electrons from the zinc so they were reduced by the zinc well, they oxidized the zinc itself because the zinc was losing electrons. In fact, each zinc atom gave each lead ion two electrons, and we ended up with lead atoms and zinc ions. Okay. In the magnesium test tube, so we had still had lead ions because we had lead nitrate in there, but the magnesium atoms at this time were the reducing agent. They were giving electrons to the lead. Okay. So magnesium is a good enough reducing agent to give electrons to lead ions. And if we give electrons to lead ions and they get reduced, they gain electrons, they turn into lead atoms. In the process, magnesium atoms are being oxidized, so they turn into magnesium ions. Okay. And then in the final test tube, or it was the first one on the previous slide, there was no reaction. Okay. So that means that lead must be a better reducing agent than copper, because copper can't reduce lead. Okay. So because we didn't get a reaction here, that shows us that copper was not able to give away its electrons to the lead ions and form lead, right? Because it wasn't a good enough reducing agent. Or you could say that lead is not a good enough oxidizing agent to oxidize copper. Copper is a better oxidizing agent than lead. So just to sum up, what we saw going on in the lead nitrate experiments, we were every time we were starting with lead ions, and this time we had atoms of copper, zinc, and magnesium. Okay, so we had Pb2 plus. Zinc and magnesium reacted with the lead ions, so they were good enough at giving away their electrons. 
They were good enough reducing agents to give electrons to lead ions, but copper was unable to give its electrons to lead ions because it wasn't a good enough reducing agent. Okay, here are the copper nitrate experiments, and I've split these kind of into two sections, and you'll see why in just a moment. Okay, on the left, uh, sorry, again, on the bottom before, up the top after. On the left, we've got the zinc experiments, and you can see that the zinc starts off clean and shiny, ends up co coated in some new material, and that's copper. And what else you can see here, which you couldn't see in the last test tubes, because there wasn't a coloured ion around, was that the colour of these copper ions in the solution has gone. Okay, so in other words, there isn't much copper left in this solution. It must have reacted. Okay, similarly here, there's something gone on with the lead, and in actual fact, there's this kind of blue solid down the bottom here. We'll explain what that is in just a moment. But again, you can see that the lead atoms have managed to turn these blue copper ions into something else because there aren't as many of those blue copper ions in the solution anymore. Looking at what went on with the magnesium, and the reason I've split this into two is because you can see that in actual fact, if I leave the magnesium in the tube for quite a long time, all that blue colour from the copper goes and we end up with this blue precipitate on the bottom. You can't even see the new copper that formed. right? And the reason for this is because the magnesium reacts with the water as well it produces magnesium hydroxide and so we get this precipitate of copper hydroxide forming down here that obscures our view of the copper. So just to show you the displacement reaction happening a bit more clearly without leaving it in there for so long, right, because you can see the copper ions have gone from the solution. So that's why I wanted to show you that because the solution has gone colourless again from being blue. In this case, we've got a nice shiny bit of magnesium up the top there. As soon as I put it in, it's really fast reaction because there's quite a difference in reactivity between these two metals. The copper starts to form on the bottom of the magnesium. You can see the top of the magnesium strip still shiny there. So let's have a look and see if we can explain the observations again. Well, we started off by looking at, uh, it was the zinc, wasn't it? The zinc reacted with the copper ions. We formed copper, that was this crust of new material on the surface of the zinc. And the copper ions, which were blue, Okay, in fact, maybe I'll just change that colour and I'll circle them in a blue colour. These blue ions turned into atoms and they were replaced by these colourless ions, zinc ions, which explains why the solution went colourless. Okay, the fact that we formed this new metal on the surface of the zinc was because copper was forming from those copper ions. And again, we had a transfer of electrons. So zinc was reducing copper, it was giving it electrons. Same thing with lead, okay? Lead managed to give its electrons to copper. And if you left it for long enough, then quite a lot of these copper ions would disappear from the solution. They'd become copper atoms and be replaced by another colourless ion, lead 2 plus, hence the fading of the solution, okay? And most pronounced was in the case of the magnesium. This is a really rapid reaction, as we saw it produced a side product as well, which isn't in this equation. But again, we've got these blue ions here which are gaining electrons from the magnesium atoms. Okay, so magnesium's being oxidized by the copper. Copper's good enough oxidizing agent to oxidize magnesium, and magnesium's a good enough reducing agent to reduce copper. So we end up with copper and magnesium 2 plus ions. And again, these are a colorless ion, so our solution loses its color. The copper nitrate experiments can be summed up as follows, I suppose. We've, got, we've started off with copper ions, and we've had atoms of lead, zinc, and magnesium. So no charge here, but charge there. All the metals reacted with the copper. So in other words, every one of these three metals is a good enough reducing agent to reduce copper ions. Okay. So all of the other metals must have been able to give electrons to copper ions. And that's exactly what reduction is. If you gain electrons, you're being reduced. So these are all reducing copper ions. Okay, moving on. The last set of experiments, zinc nitrate experiments. Now, um, what we can see here, again, before and after photos, and copper on the left, lead in the middle, magnesium on the right. Now, I've left this one till last because actually one of these reactions ought to happen um, based on what we know about the reactivity and the reduction potentials of these metals, but it's very difficult to see it happening. These two obviously don't happen at all. This one I've shown with the magnesium strip out of the solution and then pushed into the solution, you can see there's not a great deal of change going on. And magnesium does is actually a better reducing agent than zinc, 
but this reaction is really, really quite slow and quite dependent on the concentration of the solutions. It can be thrown, it can in fact be prevented if you've got the wrong concentration of the solutions. Okay, so um, if we have a look at the reactions here, there's no reaction with copper and lead. We might expect there to be a reaction with zinc, but actually it's not observed. Okay, and if you're wondering how I know what to expect here, well, there's going to be another film which gets you to use your data sheet so that you can actually predict which metal will react with which other ones. Okay, so if we just sum up the zinc nitrate experiments, we were, again, we were starting with zinc ions, so Zn2+, plus, okay, and all the other metals were as atoms that we were putting in, so solid metals. Only the magnesium reacts, or should react, I suppose you could say. The other two certainly don't. So copper and lead are not good enough reducing agents to reduce zinc. Okay, magnesium actually is. Okay, so even though it may not have been visible at the concentrations we had. Okay, so if we sum all that all sum all of that up, we could say that which metal ion was the best at taking the electrons? Well, copper nitrate reacted with all the other metals, so copper was the best at taking electrons. If something loses electrons and gives them to copper, it has been oxidized, the other thing that is. Copper got reduced, okay? But copper, by being reduced, was acting as an oxidizing agent. If it could oxidize all the other metals, it was the best oxidizing agent we had, okay? On the other hand, which metal was best at giving electrons? Well, magnesium reacted with all the other solutions, okay? So, in other words, magnesium atoms could give electrons to every other ion, and magnesium was the best reducing agent. In other words, it's the easiest one to oxidize. Okay? When you're writing equations, um, this will seem a little bit more relevant once you've seen the halogen uh, displacement films, because they do have lots of atoms that come in pairs. But when you're writing metals in equations, never ever write Na2 or perhaps Zinc2. Okay? Although they can have a 2 plus charge, they're never going to be diatomic in equations. Okay? So hopefully that has made it a little bit more clear what was going on in those reactions. I think it would probably be worth um, watching a film about the acid reactions that took place in this film. But I'm going to combine that with the film about using a data sheet so that you can see where hydrogen comes into all of this. Okay, um, as usual, I would be really, really grateful if you post any comments on YouTube or ask me any questions about things that you find difficult so that either I can improve the film or I can just give you a hand with what you don't understand. And um, yeah, keep practicing these things because it's really not too hard But if you get into the swing of it. But if you forget what, what oxidation is, what reduction is and so on, it can seem a very difficult thing to do.